Hey everyone, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today we're going to have a relaxing paint doing this magical holiday themed uh, still life. I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know to be able to create this for yourself at home. Step by step, I'm going to explain the color mixes, the techniques, everything that you need. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me uh, do these lessons by making sure the cameras are focused and that everything turns on at the beginning of the show and that anything actually works during the show. Hmm. So lots going on over there in the control booth. He is also reading the comments today. So if you have a question for me, be sure and put it all in caps because he's doing all of that and doing chat today. Um, so make sure that you give a chance to seeing it. You won't feel like you're yelling at him, I promise. He'll just think that you're, that you're raising your hand. It's our virtual version of raising your hand for the live shows. If you want to know what we're using for tonight's show, check the description below. It has a complete material list. If you'd like the traceable because you don't feel like freehanding or drawing this in, that is free and available to you on the website, theartsherpa.com. And so did we send out our gnomes? We did. Oh, excellent. The gnomes have left the building. So our gnomes have been notified. If you'd like to get a text notification directly from us, um, we will tell you how to do that during the show. And also, there it is. Uh, well, I've got to move. There, there you go. Uh, send the Art Sherpa on your phone to 33222. And if you're in the contiguous United States, yep, we will be able to message you. Um, the other way to get notified is to hit the subscribe button so that YouTube notifies you. And the other, other ways to make sure you're signed up for the newsletters. And we were going to have a answer about the newsletter today about, uh, if they have that in their dashboard. I don't know that we got that. I don't know. I don't, uh, I have not heard anything. So we may not have an answer back an answer, on yeah. that yet. Being that it's the weekend and apparently other people are not. <laughs> Wanting to work every minute of every day. It's a weird thing that they have. <laughs> I don't know why they would be that way. I don't know. But they, you know, apparently there's, there's life to be living. Some feelings. They, you know, feelings like they, they've got to leave the basement of the coding. <laughs> Not all coders live in the basement. Some of, the, some of them. Some of them. Live, live in penthouses in San Francisco Ivory making a ton towers. more money than the rest of us. Or, you know, there's a handful of them that live out on like, you know. They got their cool getaways where they're out they their, their little coder land. The co coder land. Actually, I've been now that we've just made everybody who's technologically capable of crashing our system I mad. <laughs> actually, I was, we don't know if mad. Please don't gamergate us, please. No. All right. So today we're painting on a nine by twelve surface. Uh, we've got black paint out. This is carbon black, but you could use Mars black. Anything. We put wishes on the canvas. So let's take a deep breath. <sighs> so what I would say is for these, I have wishes that are sent in requests through the Facebook group and uh, different things that people write me in that I see. Mm. But you may have something going on in your life. And the idea is you put it on your canvas and then we paint it away and it becomes part of the greater good out there. So today we have a wish for Diana. And she's just wishing for her mom's post-op healing, uh, compassion, love, and understanding, hope, change, healing, and joy. I tell you, each of these is getting lots of requests coming in. So I think that that is what the majority of people are looking for, is just us all to come back together. Uh, safety for coastal cities and healing after fires. So those are some, some wishes. I'm going to take a big brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and I use purple. And that's because it would blend okay into the black background. I'm going to go ahead and just start to put these into the ether. Ether. Into the ether where they go and hopefully, hopefully impact a positive change. You never know. Ether is good stuff. Sometimes it's the positive change in us that's the big deal. Mm, I would say oftentimes. Yeah. Not that the universe needs to come and do something for us. It's that we need to get clear on what we want to see mm -hmm. in our universe I'm and become part of that. Reach over here. We're going to paint this entire background black, and that's going to be the basis for the still life. Um, we've done a lot of uh, more dark paintings. That's not uncommon over the Hall Halloween season mm -hmm. i also want to say that i saw um 
a moderator I haven't seen in a while. Come in and I want to wave. Because <laughs> oh. it's been a minute. So. And they have been missed. But I don't want to out who it is because we have, you know, moderator anonymousness. And we might even have a new one. Yep. Well, I accidentally modded Linda Sue. And I forgot to give her a butterfly. Oh, she has a butterfly, and she signed into it on the correct okay. email. If you didn't know, Linda. So, I, 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 it was a mistake. Our moderator. It's okay. You can trust her. She won't do yeah, anything crazy. I, I went ahead and changed all. She's going to get her butterflies on later. So. Yeah. Norm, yeah, we prefer that our all of our moderators have uh, butterfly uniforms so that you can easily see them and well, know that they're there. It'll drop yeah. links for you. Like, like. You guys know that there are pollinators of joy. Mm -hmm. See, it just, it makes it so it's easier for you guys to know who is on our team and who is another community member like you guys. Just helps us, you know. All right. So when you have a beautifully solid black canvas, Take a deep breath. Mm. Let it out. Release anything that you've been carrying this week. Today is going to be just a very calm, calm, calm paint because that's what we need right now. It's a nice, calm, calm, calm paint. I am going to dry my canvas with my hair dryer, and John's going to talk to you for a second, and we'll be <laughs> right back for the rest of the painting. All right. So, guys, if you're uh, just joining in and you're new here on YouTube, there's a we have a this is a great place to come and learn to paint. Cinnamon has, oh my gosh, over a thousand paintings that she's done here on YouTube, I think. So if you go ahead and click down there on her channel, but well, before you do, click the subscribe button, then click the bell and click all. That way you get notifications when we go live. But then if you click over there and click on you know, the Art Sherpa channel, you'll see that there's playlists with hundreds and hundreds of videos there. Plus it's all on our website. So if you go to theartsherpa.com, you can click on calen on the calendar, and the calendar goes backwards in time as well as our forward scheduling. So you can go back and see all the videos we've done, and some of the some of the questions that were coming in. If you're interested in becoming a moderator or helping with our team, we don't do a lot of um, call out and requests, but there's some folks here asking in chat how to know about that. So if you're interested, you can email support at theartsherpa.com. And we'll uh, we'll get back to you guys with some information on that, but we'll be putting forward our moderator program a little bit later. So we'll have that on a public page. They were asking how to become a moderator. Oh I was my like, gosh! Oh. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> so Think like... about this deeply, though. And if you ask our mods, it's a very There's... we don't just suck you in a little bit. You get pulled way. <laughs> Do you see that face, Way though? In. That was the face of your wife walking in on a conversation going, what were you talking about when I was out of the room? <laughs> Virtually out of the room, anyways. <laughs> so there is a traceable for this still life, and I don't expect you guys to uh, be freehanding it or drawing it, but I am going to do that just in case you're doing that part of the lesson as you follow along with me. And the first thing that I want to do is work on the bottom, and on the bottom of my still life, I want to... I set this up and you see it more in the traceable and I'm going to use a tool. This is called a T square. Now these can get very pricey and especially if they're for architectural work, but these should be about $3 online. Um, and they're just a really great tool when you're trying to get a, a straight line. I am creating a book binding here that is about an inch and a half wide. So the book binding that all the still life is going to sort of sit on is a inch and a half wide and so we'll have the book there and then we can kind of imply that here though we're going to have lots and lots of moss i want to come here and sketch in a wonderful mug so this is our mug of magic or at least that's how i felt about it when i saw it so i'm going to sketch in a little bit of a curve line and i'm going to bring the sides down to a slightly shorter straight line and even though we're going to have lots of moss and lots of things layered in front of this it doesn't hurt us to do our best to kind of draw that in i'm going to bring a handle over here it's a curve line and another parallel kind of curve line coming in just to generally do that 
Now we have a couple crystals, but we're going to be doing that um, a bit later as we go. We just want to get some blocked stuff in. And up here as well, we have a box that one gets. A bit of a box. And remember that you want your lines to be parallel. So your vertical lines should be parallel to each other. And even your converging lines. And you want the lines to converge a little Ooh. bit going back to give you a little perspective of the box going back. And then we'll bring this forward. This is an interesting question. Parallel lines coming forward and then down. All right. So I guess what I'm going to need to do here is mm. flip the reference because what happened with all the reference i don't know what is there's going on a, that they all flip when they go there's a reference it, there, there's a I reference checked ghost. this one before i sent so it over know. i think it's something when it sends it there's a reference ghost that there likes is a reference something going on a gremlin for sure perhaps a haunting <laughs> it's an event <laughs> i will take that now i want to make sure the top of my box um, is also straight if the front of the box is straight. So that's always something to go in and make sure that you have those mm -hmm. lines lined up even as you go. And we will have a couple candles here. Going up and they have that wonderful sort of wax and drip. So that'll be fun to put in. And then a shorter little candle here. I mean, right there, the lines are kind of vertical. Make sure that this one is lined up a little bit better. So we've got those there. Mm -hmm. We'll have another candle here in front of the cup as well. It's kind of low. A really fun candle. And it's going to be in some moss and around moss. So I'll sketch this in even knowing that we're going to be painting that in a little more later. Just so we know. And we know we've got a couple crystals here and a bunch of moss. And we may move like the crystals a bit like into this space just to balance it out some. You know, where they'll be like this a bit more. So we'll see as we're going. I'm going to add some little book binding details here. And we know that the book goes back there. And then we're going to have some wonderful mist coming up. So that's the general sketching in of everything. Now, in painting, I'm going to put out all my colors. I like to paint the things that are furthest back, the things that are away from us, mm -hmm. and then move it forward, kind of layering it forward. That way mm. the object layers work well in relationship so to each other. Can, can we zoom in on here on the... Um, on, on this, where you, do you, you want to put the uh, oh, reference photo? Well, do you mind? Well, I'll let you put that over there, and I'm gonna cover, We'll talk about this. Okay. So, what is the furthest back here in this that you're gonna start on? So, I'm going to start in, into some of the mist, and then I'm gonna pull the candles, the box, and the cup in. Hmm. Okay. Kind of pulling those in. I've got the glow. I've got some light effects. So, there's some stuff that we've got to do. Then we've got kind of a mid ground of uh, crystals and moss and things, and then we have the book down here. So it's really quite a okay. shortened layering of objects. And I'll go over the colors just as soon as um, we have those out. And we're gonna be using most of the colors in our set today. So that'll be really good. <gasps> oh, check this out. I can kind of mm. do something neat. So I, I was just wondering if I could do this but let's say that you wanted to talk about this. We're not quite to the place where I can give you something that you can um, draw screen on screen, but check this out. I can, with my color adjust, where did it go? I just did it. You can't draw screen on screen yet? That would be really cool. Look oh, at this. Kind of like there. So you can kind of now put your hands down there and talk about what you wanted to do and you can see the ghosting. It's true, I think. Definitely. Uh, like what you were just doing. I was just like noticing that. I was like, how yeah. can I make that happen? All right. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Boys and their toys. While Boys and their toys. So tell me about your paint. I will. In just one second, I'm going to get it all out here. And then I will lay out all the colors so you guys know. And these are also in the description. So if you're needing to know what these colors are, 
They are listed in the description below and their exchanges, though we will talk about that and go over it. Okay. okay. So this is what we have out. This is purple. It's like a Diox purple. You could use any purple you have. This is Thalo green. This is Azo yellow medium, but you could just use Hansa yellow or Cad yellow medium. Burn in Sienna, this is carbon black, but you could use any black you have. I have Thalo blue, titanium white. This is quinacridone magenta. Um, you could use any good magenta that you've got, and this is primary red. You could use a naphthol red or a cad red. So mm. whichever you have in your set, don't worry about that. You are okay. I'm going to start with a number eight cat's tongue, and I'm going to begin to paint my uh, candles here. I'm going to take a little bit of my pink and my purple, and interestingly enough, my white. And I'm going to paint in this sort of drippy, wonderful candleness. I'll move this over here. Hopefully not put my brush in my coffee. I'm going to kind of come across. So this is a base. We're going to build up lighter and lighter layers to take these into um, more of a white. But we're going to have this purple pink base underneath as part of the glow. Mm. And that'll be real fun when we get it and mix it into the yellow to create the white glow in the candle as well. So pulling that in there. I mean, it's probably a good idea to, you know, really kind of make some uneven edges on our candles as we're painting them. Just being calm and painting them there. Mm. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and black together. And we're going to talk a bit about our base box. And I might go a little more brown in the front. And I probably will put a sprig of flowers up there or something to kind of balance it out. But I got to get the brown in and we'll get the wood and everything in on that as we go. I think our book should be purple. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of the magenta and the purple, and I'm going to come in and start to paint the book. This is a little bit far forward, but it needs to dry for a minute. Got to get so I'm it kind there. of going out of my order just to make sure that this is nice and dry when we get to it. And we'll put this also underneath all the moss and everything. that we're going to be adding to the top. We'll have this be underneath. So if any of the moss is showing what's underneath, part of the book is what we'll be showing. So most of this here will be covered with moss. We're just making sure that that which peeks out looks pretty solid. Mm -hmm. So nice kind of purple, purple. Let's get some blue into our mug. I'm going to take a little bit of white into my blue and start to paint this wonderful, wonderful mug. Coming along here, going around objects. The thing about blocking in is you're starting to lay in objects, but you don't have to be Especially with a dark background like this, you've still got a lot of flexibility with what you can do and how you can do it. Nice little coat there. Maybe over the handle too. Mm-hmm. That way we have a nice basis to work from for later. I'm 
saving that up for later later now I'm going to get into my mist here and I'm actually going to start with a little blue into it and I'm going to start with my cat's tongue and I'm going to brush up softly and kind of curve oh give me this there we go and this, this is going to be kind of a definite distinctive dry brushing And we're going to just dry brush out the mist from the mug. Lori called it. It's all about the layers. All about the layers, especially on something like this sort of mug mist. It's also about like getting nice curves in your lines and kind of observing. Put a little purple in that stroke. Some of the curls and things that the, that the mist, the sort of little misty mist, is doing off the cup. I'm letting a little of my purple and blue get in there underneath, and then we'll highlight with some white. When you're okay, so this is a, a very complicated question, but because I, I know it also has to do with your color palette and your base selection mm -hmm. because different color palettes mean different color selection but how do you choose the colors you're going to use well honestly observation of the painting of the references first or mm -hmm. or the idea then i look to see if there's a color story in there and if there isn't one but it's close to having one then i tend to pull it in like I look at this mist and I go, well, it does have a bit of a blue cast to it, but if I take it and add a little bit of blue purple cast to it, what does that do to the story, into the color story? So if I pull these into a lot of blues and purples, that will help make that feel a little more mystic. Now, as I have watched this for a little while, it seems to me that it would be important to swatch your colors and do mixing swatches so that you know what colors you can make with the paints you currently have available. Yes, that is always a good idea, which is why we made a video about it. <laughs> but it's super hard to answer a question, well, like, how do you look at that book and know what color to use? Because that's a, you have to know, well, what paint do I have in my, in my bin? What colors can I make with that paint? Do I like that? colors that I can make with that paint? Do I want to go get more paint to mix different colors? Yes, there certainly are layers <laughs> to the questions, aren't there? We and, ask ourselves. Now keep in mind, I don't paint and I've just watched and picked that up. So it's now keep, I've watched for a long time, but it's super complex and definitely watch some of the color palette videos. They helpful. It's sort of fun to put up there, the little misty smokes. And I'm not using a specialty brush, and I'm not doing anything, you know, like, it's particularly tricky about this other than dry brushing. And by the way, there are practice videos for both these techniques uh, and these types of S and arabesque strokes. I am on the tone. Let's Ashley, piecemeal some of our, our mist out. Ashley was asking, um, can you use matte medium for the, to get the similar matte effect, mist effect, I mean? You could use a matte medium. What a matte medium is going to do is it's going to give you a, a clear uh, curly polymer base that mats the colors, making them non-shiny and reflective. So matte medium has no pigment in it, and you can tint it. Because you can put it out plain with nothing in it, and it will dry. And you can tint it, and it will glaze. But just know that it will make those colors matte. Mm. And as long as you're cool with that, then you're good. And come here and add some little highlights to the. Mist areas just to show that they've got a little form. But you absolutely can. Mm. You can, you can do a lot with just any medium. Just think of medium as something that uh, alters the nature, the base nature of your paint. So if you have thin paint and you're trying to make it thicker, 
I wouldn't add glue or cornstarch or any of that stuff to it. What I would probably do is um, if I couldn't upgrade all my paint, I would get a heavy body medium mm -hmm. and mix it into that. I would put my expense into that and then mix my paint into that. Yeah. Because it will, it will stabilize my, even my craft paint. I can take craft paint and use that and make a heavy body paint. That's interesting. You know what else is interesting? Mm. Our website has this calendar tool that you can look back in time and see all the videos you've ever done. This is true, and there's been a few. There's been a couple. So if you were curious about, say, how to make misty stuff. I mean, I would have a video about that. <laughs> I would definitely, definitely have a video about that. So I've got my uh, smoke up, right? And we definitely have some different little... Uh, flares and everything, but we can add our little magic. So let's work a little bit on our candles. I wish my coffee our was that warm. Candle. Uh, I would love warm coffee. Are we warming coffee? I'm just no. I'm just enviously looking at your cup of coffee there, the one you painted. Oh. It's like my coffee's not that warm. So I'm making you lighter uh, color Actually. the purple, right? Because we're gonna take our candles and we're gonna make them seem a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go on the toe of my brush. Okay. That is warmer. Relative time. We're testing product stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to bring some drips down. A little highlight on the outside edge here. Need to brush that down. I don't want, I'm going to make sure that my cup is there. Come along this little outside edge here and outline it. If you need to uh, improve the flow, you can always add a drop of water into your <laughs> exaggerate some wax there. We'll exaggerate some different. Thank you. Come here and add a little bit of a drop. And I'm going to do the same over here. Breathing deep, enjoying the process of painting my still life. They see stuff in your steam. There is stuff in my steam, There's a I dragon. imagine. Do you see the dragon? There, oh, yeah, there could be a dragon. The dragon in the steam. That's the kind of cup, cu cup of coffee I need. Dragon in the steam cup of coffee. You know, when you pour it, the dragon comes out and says, Oh, I bring you caffeine. Oh, I bring you something. <laughs> so there's just another nice lightning layer. going to be pulling those into, you know, a brighter layer. I'm going to take a little of my... Brown and yellow and black mixed together. And I'm making a lighter little wood color. And I'm going to add some kind of wood green. Pretty dark though. Just a little bit of dry brushing, brush out some of the grain on the wood. A little brown. Oh, well, congratulations to Amy. Hi, Amy. She's going home. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad. Bring a little bit of a dark value here. I would say the hardest things about the box are kind of just keeping all of its edges a bit square. 
Amy is one of our longtime com community members who is having some, uh, she was recovering from some surgery, some rather major surgery, and is on her way home. So we're just wishing her congratulations here in chat. And so that's fear at home wondering, well, why is that? Why is why that is a Amy big thing? Home? It's that, because we definitely want Amy to be able to go home and be happy and be and happy. Pink. Now I'm going to take some of my detail brushes and I should have some put, huh, this is so weird, but I've got one over here, so it's okay. Which do you I'm gonna have? I'm going to grab a little detail brush. All right. And I'm going to take a little blue and black and white, and I'm going to make a pretty dark color, mm -hmm. but one that will oh, show wait. up mm -hmm. over the black. What you doing? Oh, okay. You're going over there. I'm going to bring this little light up. And if I need to add a little blue and white to it, I will. I just need to be able to see it. I did somewhat. not expect that. I'm there. No, no. It's good. I just did not expect that color paint for the stem. Yeah. I mean, stem. The wick. As long as it's not a John wick, we'll be okay. No, definitely. I haven't ever touched anybody's dog, so yeah, I have no John Wick fear in my own personal life. Like Seriously. I'm never like, oh no, John Wick might come for me because I'm like, I've never messed with John Wick's dog. I know better than that. I don't touch people's dogs. So this is a nice like beginning basis for this. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to start. It's coming together. It comes together. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and white and i'm also going to begin to make some of the distant little sparkles oh preparing it's using my little detail brush while you're doing that i'm gonna do something here little blue and white I'm just making the beginnings of little embers and things that could be coming out. These are magic little embers. And come there and just, we're just pushing these around where they could be at. Magic little embers, right? Yeah, I wanted we'll to. Come in and add some white dots in a little bit, but we just going to start here. Everything okay? I want to be able to see something and make yeah, now I can see the stud. Hmm. So if you would like to go to our, our website and find a video that you're, so what you'll do is go to the artsherpa.com, then click on videos and there'll be a little search button right there in that video area. And if you type in your keyword there, then it'll show a bunch of stuff. If you just do a general search on a website, it'll do things like search for, through all of the blog posts and the different web pages and, the pro, and then those project pages, but it's much more difficult to go that way. So I'm taking a little bit of red and yellow together and beginning the flame above the candle. The first mix of this is a little bit of red and yellow. I always make a point of not actually touching the fire to the wick. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Whether it's John Wick or a wick, don't touch the wick mm -mm. or the wick's dog. That's, it's probably more important to don't touch the wick's dog. That seems like to you be. think that would be like everywhere. Like that would be information all those guys would have. Like do what you like, just don't touch John Wick's dog. <laughs> 
They know now. I'm adding a little bit of ember to the top of that, and I'll even add a little bit of the red. So we just have a bit of the ember on the edge of the wick. Zara is really nice. That's showing that fuel. That'll need to dry for a minute. And while we have the detail brush here, I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my blue and purple and some white together. And I'm going to start to kind of put in some drips. And I may even exaggerate some drips. Hmm. This dark line is the shadow of those drips. And then I will also put some, a little bit of this over here, add some drips. So where I have those drips, I'm going to go ahead and take a little of my purple, pink, white mix. We like so much. Make it a lot wider, and I'm going to add a smidge of my yellow to it. And around the edge of this, I'm going to add that yellow. Just calmly pulling it down. It's going to show the glow of the candle. Happening a couple of places. Just getting a little bit of that candle glow. And a little bit of the regular candle color, which is the white, purple, and a little bit of the pink. I definitely want to keep a little of this blue here, but I don't want it too strong. So that's going to be a little balance is coming in and having it just be like a bit of a hair of a of something. Because we definitely, definitely want to uh, have that candle be whiter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come under here, too, back the other way, and you can kind of see how it pops a little bit. It pops it a little bit, and it takes a little of that. Uh, the shadow is still there, but it's just a little bit diminished. And as you go down, you do want to get more. into the color that we've got here. And a little more white. Get a little white around here. And a little more white. Just using my detail brush. Now we're going to keep going into our yellow and take a little bit of our yellow and white. I'm going to come into the center of this flame. Again, right here. Come back and exaggerate the red in a minute. Now you can get a little bit of it, the red orange going right now. Because that's right here.
Getting that little kind of balance of glow, right? Mm hmm Little painting that up. We want the yellow in the center and a little bit of our orange red glow on the outside. There we go. Mm. Now I'm going to take the back of my brush and kind of dip it up and down in paint. Oh, you moved away from me. Oh man. Hold on. Let me watch that. You just got, you went too fast. I thought you were doing that over the top of the. Oh yeah. You don't have to have a specialty tool. Nope. Just have to make a mark. Little magic embers. Mm. And what's great is as you dot, it will make those little marks. Little random marks. You just put them where you want them. Wherever you think that they truly belong. Next candle, same deal. Yellow it mixed into the light purple pink mixture. Mm. To show the glow. I even get more yellow into it if I want to. Whatever makes the candle drip, you do that. And then a little extra white. Just putting it down there. Mm. Deep breath. Enjoy the process of painting. Enjoy the process of just having a nice mellow moment in your life. I'm gonna add a little bit of white right here. Just a little more red yellow. Maybe a little bit of that. A couple places on the candle. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Back to the blue cup. I'm going to add just a little white to blue. 
and get that second layer on here. Maybe a little bit bluer down here. I have to glaze back with some purple. All right. So I can't see chat. What's going on? Let's see here. Well, Lori is just sending you an awesome sticker. Hey, Lori. A little lovey pair. Thank you for the lovey pair. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Tina wants to know if you're doing all right. You seem a little chill today. I'm a little chill today. It's a, this was a chill painting day for you. Just a chilling out painting day. I think that's, we've, you know, I've had a lot of coffee today and been working outside since early this morning. And I think Cinnamon's been having a much more chill inside, doing painting, being introspective day. Just having a nice calm paint. So we're going to keep blending that around. We want a nice coverage of the blue because we want the cup to really show up blue. And we may need to dry after that so we can do the nice fun like uh, brown or red inner lip and maybe some of that patterning we see and maybe also some of the shading, but I think we need to get it dry first. Hmm, okay. All right. So if you're drying, don't forget to use it on the lowest heat setting because heat can cause color shift and all that other kind of stuff. But uh, you'll just want to make sure you thoroughly dry it. You can see how it goes from sort of that gloss to a matte finish as it does that. You can kind of see as she holds it up, it glitter glistens like that. So you can kind of see. <laughs> we just go ahead and get this number 12 round wet, nice and wet. And we're going to load up some black paint right there on this brush. Get it kind of fluid and flowing out. And we're going to come along and uh, make sure that our our box has some hand painted kind of wood grain on it. Generally when I'm doing wood grain, it's about, you know, these sort of like little wood lines and capturing some of the little knots and things. Make it look can very be on something. Wood like. Yeah, just make it be a little wood wood like. A little bit wood like. These little runabout lines. There you go. Oh, thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. For the heat talk. I love the heat talk. Shifty paint colors. I'm going to take my purple and my blue together. It's going to move them more into an indigo color. And I'm going to make sure that the base of my cup, while blue, definitely has this uh, kind of value shading it up there. Most of the light should be focused from where the candles are. And come underneath. You guys can do this. Just... Except that there's layers involved and it's going to take a second to do. But if you commit to the layers, allow things to dry when they need to dry, you will get there. Commit to the layers. Commit to the layers. That's like a t-shirt. It's a something. I'm going to take a little of my brown and um, green. I'm going to load them up on this brush. And I'm going to go ahead and add some greenery around the base of the candles and on the top of the box. Now in this particular case, I have decided it should be kind of like a flower. So that way the moss isn't just a moss. Going to just add little leaves here and there. I'm going to add some green 
into the mix. Uh, and some yellow to give some highlights because I want to pick up some of the leaves. It's the contrast that will help us see the foliage. And then when that's all dry, we'll put some like some pretty little pink flowers, some pink and purple, something cheerful and delightful. You guys will like. Just letting things dry and adding those highlights. You can see I'm just on the toe of the brush and I just touch it and pull it to kind of capture some of the leaves. Add a little white, yellow to that mix, just kind of lighten it one more value. We can get an even brighter little highlight around some of the candles. Or maybe the, the light of the candles impacting the leaves a bit. There we go. So some nice cute little hold that space and then done and dry, we'll come back in and uh, put um, something else there. Now, for the white, for the pattern on the mug, I actually am going to go white first, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to glaze it with a color. So I'm going to get this brush, the number 12 round, and I will, I think these are consolation is what I think this is, so. We'll go ahead and start that. I'm doing this so that when I come back over with an orange and yellow glaze, that that's easy to do. Little dots here, just trying to duplicate the uh, patterning that we see on the mug. We have folks from all over the world. Thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. Rebecca is from France. From France. She says hello from France. Hello, Rebecca from France. Come here, little dot. A little dot, a little dot, little dashes. Oh, this is fine. You're fine. You can paint this. I'm going to assume there's a dot there. Even though we've got crystals and things coming up, I just want to make sure that I've got these dots. So these are... I think these are supposed to represent stars and constellations, is what I what I believe <laughs> it's supposed to be doing. So I didn't hand paint this mug, so I'm not sure. I'm just going with the uh, I'm just going with this the decisions this artist made. Right. They 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 clearly made some emotional constellations. I don't know. It they don't feel like constellations to me, but you know, yeah. See, constellations are cultural because if you go to different cultures around the world everybody draws pictures with stars so they all have different ones we just have ones here that primarily came from romans and greeks and oh. those guys so but china has a whole different set of them and so does japan and korea and um i imagine that's some many yellow other... to my red yeah yeah that's i mean i've never done a deep dive on it but i do know that in general Everybody sees something different in the sky, and they call it something different. Like I imagine there's a YouTube channel about it. How many, how many other cultures have a Big Dipper? I mean, literally, they just don't have a big spoon called a Big Dipper. So, I mean, that just doesn't exist in a whole bunch of other color cultures. I'm going to try this. <laughs> so, while you're drying that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right there below and when you're hitting it click the bell thing and then an all button should pop up there i think it's there and you will be able to get a notification anytime we go live through the little email -y thingy now i'm going to take a little of my yellow and my red together and i'm going to 
kind of imply some glow here mm -hmm. on this candle because it would be there. I, I feel like these candles couldn't have even been where they show them because you would see their glow on stuff. And add a little red to it. A little bit here. Just a little bit of the glow, even before I add any of the reflections, just to show what's going on. Now I'm going to get some yellow orange here. And go over. Hmm. Now, did you rate this on a hootness? Yeah, I think this is a two, three hoot. Two, three? Yeah, it's two, three. I would say whenever I do any S strokes or arabesque strokes, I always elevate the hoot level. Mm. But there's a lot of layers here and a lot of different stuff to paint. So yeah. I up that hoot scale for that as well. You can see like having the white underneath helps these marks kind of show up a little better. And I feel like it's going to also help. Uh, I'm going to add some just yellow right here. So Mary is in Ireland. And Hi, Mary about, in Ireland. She's thinking about doing this. And I'm hoping that we can encourage her to give it a try. I hope you give it a go, Mary. I think it's a fun painting. I have changed my water to fresh water. Uh, uh, and I'm going to load up some white. And that's just so that my color stays sort of bright. I'm going to add some reflections to the cup. Oftentimes, something like this will have reflections on it. Ah. Let's see how that ends up working out when we get the other candle in. Rinsing that out thoroughly. Now, I did do the purple under here, and um, I've got that, but I am going to want to do an interesting trick. I'm going to take something called a sponge. This is a sea sponge. You could just do a house sponge. And I'm going to use it to initially put in some of this texture, and then I will put the other objects into the texture. This is green and brown together. We need to some yellow into it so we can see it. We just I see a dark green. All along here, a little green. I like the sponge for moss and things because it has a irregular texture that is reminiscent of moss. You just got to avoid the holes. Now, if I want to add a little more yellow, I can come to the top of the moss. And highlight it. And so this is like moss that's closer to the objects that are there. We'll put the objects in and then layer some moss over the top. Yeah. Mossy areas. Mossy areas are always good areas. Be sure, though, to uh, keep your sponges rinsed out. Don't let acrylic paint dry on them because it will ruin the sponge. If you've got the dollar store cellulose sponges, not as big of a deal. But if you went to the trouble getting yourself some sea sponges, that could be annoying. Mm. All right, let's try this. All right. And go over here. 
And yeah, so if you go to theartsherpa.com, you can find a whole bunch of interesting stuff out there. All of the videos. I, I didn't think you were going to be gone that long, but I didn't think it was that fast. Hmm? You're fast. How am I fast? Use a fast dry. I didn't have time. Oh, I to just get... want to make sure it's, it's dry so I can start like layering some objects on there. I'm going to take uh, my white, my purple, and start a candle over here. Oh, the little one in the corner? Yeah, we'll start. And this is just a square brush. This is a 3 8 uh, Monza glaze. I'm just saying grab whatever square brush you have. When or... you say square brush, you mean kind of fast. Well, it's not rounded. Just oh, to help us with yeah. the edges. Okay, so the brush head is kind of like a square Like edge. a bright or a flat. Really, for the crystals that are next to it, I'm just painting in the candle with it. Mm. That's really nice. Very fun, cool stuff. Add some glow there. Even before I get into anything else, I'll just go ahead and start to think about that glow. A little bit of yellow. Now, the crystals are really fascinating creatures. Um, one of the things that can make them seem challenging, and I'm going to go ahead and get some white onto my brush, is both the fact that they are see-through, mm. right, that they, that they do. We can put it here or here. I want to kind of show it off maybe here. So you have that, and then you have some very kind of fractured, straight-edged elements to any of the crystals. I'm going to come down, and which is why sometimes it's nice to use a brush like this mm -hmm. to begin talking about the crystals. Anywhere that you've got definitive lines, you can bring down like the crystal and growth structures. And then do a similar thing right here. Mm, those are pretty cool. Getting those straight lines down. Crystalline yeah. structures. Crystalline structures. Now I'm going to take some blue. I'm going to come across here in a couple places. And I'll want to keep these lines as straight as I can. Right? But that doesn't mean that sometimes there isn't something in there. You know, like, I'm going to take this purple and blue and... these different colors there we go grabbing a little bit of white just working that out and then we'll do some of the um White, yellow, orange kind of color that we've got going here.
some weight in there. Mm. I like how you can make these crystals. I can see just a whole big garden of them being done. Yeah, I'm sure. That would probably be super fun. Yeah. Be kind of time consuming though, I imagine. Mm hmm Because these are pretty they're not, you know, not slow, but they're not fast to make. Yeah, they're not slow, they're not fast, they're kind of an in-between kind of weird speed that you get going. And taking a little of the different colors and mixing them together, because this one has sort of a cloudy aspect over here. And back into kind of a white one. Mm. Coming down here. And then you can always go back into different colors. Because it also reflects some from around the painting, huh? Yeah, I'm going to add some little fractal blues in there. Fractal blues? Yeah, like they're refracted from different spaces. That sounds like a... It's nice if it's streaked sometimes. The paint is streaked and bring this in sort of an upward stroke. So, so we're just trying to capture that like different hmm? late sixties jazz band. Yeah. Reflective blues. Could be. And we've also got this great candle over there, so we can take a little of our yellow and our white and express some of that. Mm. And just make sure the points and elements on it seem sharp. And you have a nice little mixture of reflect, refractive, refracted light, whatever. <laughs> Load up your brush and, you know, give it some nice sharp highlights. I like them. Yeah, everybody definitely likes the reflected crystals. That was something that was definitely needed. Oh, good. A lot of people have, like enjoy drawing drawing them, but this is a this allows folks just to sort of take it to the next layer. Take Better. it to that next level. They're fun to draw. You're right. They're super fun to draw. They're interesting objects to draw, and they can be very interesting objects to paint. As a matter of fact, I would love to love to love to see all of the crystals that you would paint. So, <laughs> please paint some and share them on. Uh, where would they share them? Uh, anywhere online. You can share them on Instagram. We have a Facebook group. We do have a Facebook group. That's for tutorials. <laughs> it is for <laughs> if tutorials. If you're following this show. Yes. It's for that. Come on in and show us what you're doing. I'd like to see that. Just adding little bits of interesting elements. I always like to get in there and be like, that would be interesting. Oh, that would be interesting. I may take a, a little bit of my green and blue together mm. to make a wonderful color and get my white into it. It's going to be an unexpected color in that mix. I think it will also help with that. Feeling of that crystal. Yeah. All right. So we've got the candle over here, and we're going to continue to paint that. <laughs> so how long does it typically take you to plan out an original design like this? Well, if I'm just painting from a reference, I just need to spend some time sort of thinking about how I'm going to break it down. I'm going to add some lighter highlights up here. 
I'm going to just be breaking down, like, how would I break that image down? What would I want to paint? What colors would I want to use? Where would I change it? I spend a, a bit of time with it. I also spend some time thinking about, like, what it would be like for you guys to maybe have to paint it. Hmm. You know, would it be something that would be fun and easy, or would it be kind of a challenge? And so if I look at all that in my end feeling is is that you guys will get a lot out of it I'm adding a little yellow highlights but their skills or techniques or that just the image will maybe is the right image for the time that we're in you know it's like mm -hmm. a good time to do that image any of that stuff then that goes into it if i'm doing um a design just from imagination that that's a deceptive one because it can seem like that comes very quickly like uh the mystery painting that I just painted raw from imagination. But one is always sort of thinking about, I'm getting some blue. One is always sort of thinking about how to um, paint and, and what you might paint. You may be thinking more than you realize about the future paintings that you're doing even the ones from your imagination. So I always wonder if it's like, if it's not really just my subconscious getting to do what it wants to do in relationship to that. Mm. Right. There we go. Kind of getting a little bit of that candle started and I'll get into my small brush here. Right now, a little little that we'll get a little black on there always interesting to put a wick in hmm. and go ahead and get a little of the make sure that my brush is super rinsed out and then I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of the white we're going to be back at the easel really soon Oh and yeah. I know we've had some questions about that, but John's working on getting uh, it built back up. So we'll be table and easel in future. We are. We're actually just making a few little changes to make that happen. So. I'm in here making sure that there's some highlights. That the candle has a bit. I might even come grab some of this unexpected blue here. Unexpected blue. Maybe you put that right there in the candle. Such an interesting color. That was the first single of reflective blues. I'm going to go ahead and get some yellow and red together. And we'll paint that flame. Going to uh, add a little of the ember to the end. Thank you mm, do. Yeah. And I may put um, a little bit of a white yellow center, so I'll dry this real quick. Mm -hmm. I think you have to make sure you get them dry thoroughly so that as you do the layers on there, you can uh, don't pick up any of the wet paint below and muddles up your paint colors or it can a little yellow and white and paint the center a little yellow that center center painted that interesting kind of flow around the flame which is kind of an orange um, biasing to red like more red of an orange but still kind of an orange
That's pretty cool. Adding a little yellow and just sort of and some reflections a bit there. Anywhere that I need any sort of like defining crystal lines. Yeah. Put those there now. I need those if those were gone. More moss. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I was Get thinking. Some of your green moss. You tend to find a lot of moss on the bottom of still lifes when they were like, I don't want to put down some cloth. So what else can I put down in here to sort of fill in the space? It does feel like there is some <laughs> moss, 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 uh, kind of event happening there. If you don't feel like I'm tired of crinkled up cloth, we're going to do moss today instead. So you can work <laughs> on your sponging technique. I'm just taking the sponge and I'm going to go ahead and highlight maybe with a little green, yellow, white, a little bit of this moss. Just the top of it so it has shape and form. Now we may still need some down the front, mm -hmm. but I've got a pain in the spine of the book a little bit. So hold okay. on just two seconds. Just some quick dry, dry, dry to make sure that we get that ready to go. Again, so you don't pick up those colors underneath there and it muddy your your image at all. You don't want that to stuff. So okay. So I'll go ahead and take my T square and just sort of reaffirm the spine of my book. Mm -hmm. Just because you know it's real easy to get off your straight lines. Yes. And uh, doing this will help. I'm going to take my uh, square brush. This is the bright brush. You know, just a brush with a nice edge, and I'm going to come here using that. I just mixed a light color that I could see. Oh, I didn't understand what you're doing there for a second. Okay. Just to help myself have that nice edge of that book. Yeah. Now, I can bring lots of stuff over and under and around it, but this will let me have that. And I'm going to begin to kind of shade it. Oh, yeah. lighter purple kind of coming down a little mix mm -hmm. just so that we can see the book is purple doesn't hurt to i'm gonna talk about a couple little kind of publisher marks down here of the binding we'll foil on the binding and then what's great about this is you're going to get a uh, place to put your own title. One of the nice things about any paintings that involve books is that you can personalize them to like your favorite book, family member. It's a great place to put a message. that you might want to somebody in your life. Mm. It's important to have that nice edge. I'm going to come in there and um, go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit of my orange. That book's pretty cool. They liked the ghost in the window yesterday. Did they like the ghost in the window yesterday? I'm mm -hmm. so glad you guys liked that. That was a very strange painting that came out of me. <laughs> Don't really know what to say about that. I'm taking a little yellow and white here, and I'm going to come back and kind of maybe make those a little bit stronger. And then in the center here, I'm going to take my blue. And we are going to say that the spine has 
a darker area for words. This is another good place where having the T-square can help you because I can come back across here. Make sure that I've got a fairly straight line, get some white paint. And therefore get a little of that detailing in. So that'll be something that you can put a word into, a message, um, anything. I will leave mine blank, mm -hmm. right? You guys put something in there that's meaningful to you. Uh, before the paint dries into the, to the moss, I am going to take some of my moss down over some of the so it binding. Overhang overhangs just a smidge. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit in a couple of places. And that's so that these objects relate to each other. Right. Now that that moss is there, now make sure you protect your, protect your uh, sponge there, whatever you're using. Oops. Mm. Some water happens. I'm going to get some of my pink and a little of my white. And I'm going to come here over by these candles and add some of those flowers that we talked about. Oh, yeah. Just loosely mixing pink and white and doing little buds and things. Just so that there's a little wreath of the flowers. The not sneaky children. Not sneaky children. And I think I did really like the um, kind of red that was down here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little of my red. And load it up. Oh. There it is. These are like little berries or something, and I oh, like okay. them, so I'll paint them in. Hopefully, they have a I like them value of some sort. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sneaky! Oh, you're going down there. Nice little pops of red mm -hmm. kind of hidden in there. And then I'll go ahead and take a little white paint on the tip of my brush and uh, oh. add some little reflections. There we go. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't lose you. Kind of think about those reflections where the candle lights are. And when that is all done, you just take it all in and evaluate, see if there's anything else that you'd like. If you're happy, then all you've <laughs> got to do is uh, give it a signature. I always am interested when someone comes in and is like, hey, so any single ladies in here? 
<laughs> so, it's just the weirdest thing that comes in. They got totally band hammered out, but I had to go scroll back up and say, it's like, that's a weird thing. What was that about? I had to read the little. You know what I got to say to that is uh, all yeah. of the uh, people that watch my show know better than to talk to an internet stranger. Stranger danger, yo. Yes. It's not, it's good to not socially distance, but this is not a dating site. <laughs> <laughs> Today it's questionable if it was a painting site. No, this is great. By the way, everybody loved this. Let's just talk about the dragon and the steam. You didn't, you didn't know how, that, that's, that's what's brought some extra. Some extra interest. Mm-hmm. Well, I think if you guys want to kind of explore that and maybe, you know, take that dragon in the steam. I mean, I do see where he is. I do see what you guys are talking about. And you want to exaggerate that and turn that and, make, you know, have what dragon coming out of steam. I think that would be a fun thing to do. Mm, yeah. I definitely, definitely would recommend that. So a lot happening right now. A lot of stuff going on with people. Well, probably a lot of stuff going on with you. So I genuinely wish you and your family, your friends, and your community are safe and healthy and okay. Remember to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really, really soon. Bye-bye. Oops. Bye-bye. <laughs>